Okay, I'm back. Now what I want to do is I'm going to show you pressure flaking. And uh, what that is, and so instead of where I hit the edge and strike a flake off of it, in this process I take a tool like this little deer antler tine right here, and I literally put it right on the edge, and then I push into the edge, and then I push, and I push off little teeny flakes. So the flakes are much smaller. They're the same, they have the same basic attributes as these larger flakes do, but they're gonna be much smaller. But in this process, it allows me to go through and do the final thinning and cleaning and straightening of the edges and faces to get it all finished out. And then I will notch it. I think I will make a San Pedro style point, which is a local early ag style around here. That's about 2,000 to 3,000 years old uh, when they were being made around here and they were used with the atlatl and darts before the invention of the bow and arrow. Um, although the bow and arrow may have come in while these were still being used and made. So what I'm gonna do is start doing that. So I have a couple pads of leather right here that I'll hold in the palm of my hand like this, and then I hold the biface in my fingers like this. And then I hold my other hand, the tine in my other hand like this. And what I do is I put it right on that edge and then I push into it and down. So by pushing in, I'm building up force into the rock. I'm building up energy. If I come in from above and I just try to push it's gonna break pretty quick. But if I come in from the side more, push into it, I build it more force and then rotate it and then the energy will rip across and break a flake out. So initially I'm gonna be doing a lot more where I'm pushing straight up and down and getting short flakes. But when I get that edge all prepared just right, then I can start pushing little flakes that go out across it. That's how you make them look uh, real pretty. You get the nice uh, flaking on them. Um, so on this style of point, their flaking is not not always that really beautiful, but sometimes it is. And it's, it's probably more percussion than pressure. But I'm gonna, I wanna show you uh, pressure, so I'll probably make this a little nicer than it might need to be. Um, but first off, I'm gonna go down these edges and just get rid of the little lips and things. And what I'm doing is I just put it on the edge and push in and down, and I'm getting these little itty bitty flakes. Boom, like that. So the leather's protecting my palm. And then I will use the side of my tool. Instead of using a hammer stone, when I'm abrading my platforms in, in this process, I use the side of my antler tine. And what it does, if I use a hammer stone, it makes my platforms too strong. With the side of my antler, it makes them just right. So now I'm gonna put it, my tool right on there, right on that little spot right there, pushing in and down. I push a little bit more and that flake went all the way halfway across. So I'll come down and I'm gonna do another one next to it. About the width of the tool over, that one slipped. So these flakes, at the stage this is in, I'm just trying to get my edge sort of straightened out. You can see my edge comes down and then it jogs over here and does all this stuff. Same way over here, it's kind of irregular. So I'm gonna get it more straightened out. But every time you do that, you gotta come in and make sure you get rid of those sharp, dull edges because if you don't, and you go to push off those edges, they're gonna crush, and you're not gonna get a flake like you want. You're gonna get a little hinge or a little step fracture, and you get them in this stage of the game, it, it, they pile up pretty quick, and then you can't, you can't do it, you can't flake across them. So I'm just working on the base, give it a grind, and now I'm gonna push this series of little flakes across this area in here just sort of thin that down a little bit. If you think about this, this is gonna be socketed into a four shaft, which will be a, a little stick to cut a notch in that'll slide over this, and then it's wrapped with sinew or glued in with some kind of glue, like a pine pitch, something like that. But if I, I want that edge to be really thin and nice, it makes it much easier to haft into your four shaft. So I'll come down here and do a few little flakes here. A little one there, another one there. See, I took one there and one there. That one was a little bigger. This one should be a little bigger. Except it slipped. There we go. And get one more. So I just did that little series of flakes there. And I might come in and do one more right here. It's 
so that was kind of okay, not great. But you can see I have a little bit of a little step fracture there and one over here. So I got a little bit of problems to get rid of on this here. A lot of those things wouldn't have mattered at this stage. You can leave them and it's not going to really affect it. But you also want to make it look good. So I might switch over to a slightly fatter tip tine. It just gives me a little more... I can push a little bit broader pressure flakes with. That one's a little bit wider there. I'm also going to come down this margin and take a series of little flakes. Get rid of those the remnants between the flake scars. This stuff is fairly tough. See that pressure flake went all the way to the middle. This is it's a this Granger Green is um pretty darn nice, but it could be heat treated to make flake just a little bit easier. But it doesn't need to be. And by not heat treating it and leaving it tougher like this, it makes a better, sturdier tool. This will, won't break as easy as if it was heat treated. So it might survive a shot into an animal or getting shot and it doesn't hit a rock. You might get more than one shot with it. But prehistorically, when they shot their darts or arrows, they could only count on one shot. They might get more, but they couldn't count on that. That just hinged out on me all the more. I'm going to grind that platform a little stronger. Okay. I'm just working on this edge right now. Getting it straightened out. This distal end needs some work too. Need to get down there on it. Come into here. I got a really good little platform right there that I push an angle up into here. Boom. So see that little flake went all the way up to there. Got rid of some ugliness in there. So it's just, it's kind of like little nibbles at a time. But the key to this, the key to this is how I'm doing this is my tool the way I'm holding my tool is I'm not holding it up above and pushing down to make flakes come off. I'm actually holding it like this and I'm coming in from the side. I'm coming in from the edge. So you imagine a plane, the edge of your biface, there's this sort of plane that extends out. I'm coming from below that so that when I'm pushing my energy is going to angle out across that surface. So I like this Granger Green. On, we'd see it on archaeological sites in Wyoming and um, what it, what's interesting about it as it gets old as it ages and patinates it kind of gets greener it gets a lighter kind of a prettier green color so you'd see these flakes of this really beautiful green stuff which this looks kind of like a dull gray but this surface is a little bit lighter green because this was closer to the or a little, yeah, a little bit greener. This is closer to the surface of the skin, and so it's lightened up a bit, where inside it's much darker. But over a period of time, this will turn really green. It'll be like the skin was on it. So I just did, oops, that one slipped off on me because I didn't prepare my platform. One of the things about this, you gotta make sure you set your platforms up, you strengthen that edge, if you don't, you got to push hard enough that it'll crush. And then you got something that looks ugly. So I got a good platform right here now. Boom. That flake went to there. This distal end is still really ugly. So you never want to leave one place that's that's thicker and fatter than anywhere else. You want to make sure when you're reducing it down, you're taking it down, you're thinning it all about the same with maybe your thickest spot out here in the middle and it tapers to the ends this way and this way. So bifaces have a lenticular cross section. 
this way and this way. Although mine tend to be pretty flat, this in overall in that, that respect right there. Okay, I'm gonna do a couple more basal thinning flakes here. It's a good one. I'm gonna went to there. I just keep working on straightening it out and just work along these edges. This needs a couple more taken right out of here. Boom. That one went right over the top of the one below it. So in the in flint napping, when you do this for fun and for art and whatever your reasons might be. Um, it's kind of addicting, just grabs hold of your boo-boo, but um, this part process of pressure flaking is the most work. It's the hardest part. But for a beginner to learn, you can have the most success with this too. When you start out, you can actually make some stuff. Percussion flaking takes a lot more hand-eye coordination and practice to get really get good at it. That cleaned out some of my little mess there. My embarrassing little mess down here. So I just make sure I get that edge just right. Grind it. So I just am trying to clean off this little deal doodad right there. There we go. That got under most of it. I can just pick up what little bit is left from this end right here. Give it a little bit of a grind. Want that strong. I just a little step on there. There we go, that went right under it, so boom. So now that's nice and flat across there, across that base, that's looking good. So just going up and down this, a couple more series of flakes. A little bit of work down here around the distal end. Got some ugly spots. If I come in and make the effort to just straighten it out a little bit, Just switching to a different tine a little bit here. It was time to do that. Ha ha ha. Oh, you turkey. It's tough, this stuff is tough makes a good tool in. Be a good, strong projectile point. There we go. The flaking's getting a little too oblique. You don't really see it quite this nice on a on San Pedro's very often. They have nice percussion flake. They're neat points. Okay. You can see how I took, I started down here at the tip, I pushed one there and one there and I went ding, 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 all the way down, pushing them kind of at an angle to the edge. And they're starting to match up with those ones over there. So you get that collateral pressure flaking, which is so pretty to look at. Okay, um, now it's time to do the notching. So this biface is now really thin. It's in pretty good shape. It's ready to be notched. And in order to do that, I have this special tool. It's this, it's a deer antler. 
that I've ground down into this spatula shape for it's very thin, but I have all the strength of the width of it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here to the base of my blank, my, my biface, and I'm gonna start taking flakes off, one or two or three little flakes right here, and then I'll flip it over and I'll take one or two or three flakes, and I'll go back and forth taking flakes, back and forth from side to side, and eat a hole into it. This is the same process as the pressure flake in that we were just doing, but in this case, I'm just taking them in one place and eating a hole into it. So before I pushed a flake out of here and I broke this little corner off, I'll just incorporate that into my notches so that my, uh, my notch will run up into here with a fairly narrow base. It'll be sort of uh, Cienega or San Pedro-ish sort of basal corner notch kind of a point. And so what I'll do is I I'll hold my leather, I hold my leather in the palm of my hand like this, just like I was doing when I was pressure flaking. Then I hold my biface like this. And I take my pressure flaker and I put it right on the edge. And I push in and down and I push a little flake off. So I don't know if you can see that little flake right there that I pushed off. So then I'll go right next to it and do another one. And maybe I'll rub it a little bit. And then I'll flip it over then I'll do the same thing. Over, over, push a couple more, and then I turn it back over again. And I just keep doing that back and forth, and I eat a hole into the rock and make the notch I want. Prehistorically, folks, the notches people made would have been determined by the culture you live in. And you, you sat down and you made a certain, certain shape of projectile point and everybody living in your same cultural group did the same thing. So it's pretty nice for archeologists that everybody made kind of the same projectile point style so that when we find them, we can know kind of how old they are and who have made them. So then I'll go to the other side and I'll do the same thing. I'll come into here and I'll push one, two, or maybe three little flakes off, turn it over, rub it a little bit, do the same thing in and down. Push these pressure flakes back and forth and just eat this little notch down into the biface. And then the trick is to kind of match it up. So you can see it's taking shape there now. Come in, do it some more. Flip it over, do it again. Back and forth. So you have to be very careful when you're notching because what can happen is, is you get in there and you'll you'll hit a flake and it'll kind of round out and you you can't get the notch to go anymore and you flip it over and you try it again and it just rounds it out some more and you reach a point where you can't make your notch go any deeper. And it's a really common thing. You'll see a lot of prehistoric ones that have that same problem. Um, so you just have to make sure you, you keep your edge uh, crisp and you rub it a little bit to keep it, the edge strong so it doesn't crush because if it crushes, then you can't make your notch go deep enough and then your notches don't match up.